We are a small startup in the Bay Area working on a big problem, urban congestion. So fundamentally, as we heard this morning, a lot of people are moving into cities. We have mass urbanization, whether it's the big cities like Sao Paulo, Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, uh, Mumbai, uh, Bangalore. And that is really putting a lot of uh, pressure, stress on the underlying physical infrastructure of cities. Uh, it's the, the roads, the buses, the trains, and more importantly, the commuters who actually commute every single day. So what we are trying to do is using technology as a way of attacking this problem with a combination of uh, spatial insights and behavioral incentives. So at a high level, it's what is the traffic model of a city? You know, how does this, the city actually flow? How do commuters move? And what's their behavior? And what are the sort of incentives through which you can shift that behavior? So that's really what we are doing in a nutshell. So my personal uh, story is that I actually spent uh, the last decade on, on, on uh, living on the web. Uh, so, uh, and this is pretty much true for me and the rest of my team. So we were looking at how packets flow in the, in the, the digital world and making that faster and better. And also how people move from page to page and making those experiences a lot faster, better, and more personalized. I spent nearly a decade at Google and so did uh, most of my team. And that was a lot of fun because you know, we had the opportunity to make the web a lot faster and uh, much more personalized. And then we uh, took a step back and we realized that a lot of the same problems that we face on the web are identically the same problems we have in the physical world as well. The only difference is that we actually don't have Moore's law actually working in our favor. So the amount of time we spend commuting every single day, the amount of uh, the, the kinds of products that we can build to make the uh, daily commuting experience a lot uh, faster and better and more personalized is really what we got excited about. So we started the company about a couple of years back based on some research that we were doing at, at uh, Stanford and using some of the same ideas that we did on the web and bringing those into the, 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 the real world. So uh, we announced the company about a, about a month back and we are now live in uh, three continents. Uh, in Asia, in South America, and, and recently in North America. So that's really what I wanted to share with you today. So uh, I'm going to you know, motivate the problem with, with, uh, with a peak time problem and mass transit. So as we, as we heard this morning, the, uh, the more cities have, uh, have very, very clogged up roads. So some of the emerging cities are investing much more heavily in, uh, in mass transit. And so essentially what happens is, you know, uh, in, in, in terms of the, the daily life of a commuter, the commuter comes to a train station and they see uh, these packed trains go by, or packed buses go by, and they have these massive crowds that they have to get past. So they see the, the first train go by, the next train go by, and eventually they get on the third train. So this is a growing problem in terms of whether you go on roads or in public transit. And what cities are increasingly trying to figure out is, can we understand exactly what is happening at, at a detail level? Rather than packets, it's about people, right? So can you understand exactly what people are doing uh, and how are they using the, the underlying mass transit? So with that, as the, uh, you know, with that as a motivation, what the cities are trying to figure out are core metrics around how long are people waiting in specific stations? How long are they, are they in specific trains? How, how loaded are the, the specific trains? So a lot of the, the, the metrics come up from these kinds of questions. So what cities have been doing is uh, attacking this by adding more sensors into, into, uh, the, uh, into train stations and buses. So essentially, you know, the, the, the classic kinds like the electromechanical sensors which weigh you know, the, the, the number of people within a, within a train, or they're adding video cameras. And so our approach is, is very different because the, the option of adding hardware into these uh, transit systems is just really expensive, slow, and hard. So we're coming at this from a completely different perspective, which is what data can we use and can we merge data across multiple sources and can we understand from that what is really happening in these, in these, in these systems. So I'm going to show you a demo of a couple of different systems to moderate what we're doing. So first, I'm actually going to show you uh, uh, a, a train system. Oh, can you guys see this? No. Let me move this here. So wait, have you guys even seen my slides so far? Oh, OK, all right. <laughs> 
So, uh, so this is uh, a schematic of a of a of a train of a transit system. Along with the you know uh, at, the, at the top you can see the the top level metrics in terms of how many commuters there are, how many trips are they taking, and what is the number of uh, you know the the amount of uh, trains, amount of time that each commuter is actually is waiting. So I'm going to animate this, and this is actually a digital reconstruction of a city. Um, so essentially, the, the, with existing data, we actually can infer pretty much everything that is happening about the underlying transit system. So let me run this. So you can see over here that uh, there's a whole bunch of, this is a full schematic of the city. And you can see that there are trains running. Uh, and this is actually a true replica of what is actually happening in that city. So I'm going to pause. So this is at 8:40 in the in the morning in in a, in a in a in a real city, and each of the the blobs that are actually flying by are actually trains, and each train is actually being represented as uh, with the with the number of people who are actually on that train. So I can I can go in and click on any any uh, specific train, and figure out exactly what is happening on that train. You know, what is the, how many people were at different stations and when did they actually get in and when did they actually get out? And this is actually full reconstruction of what is actually happening with existing data sources. I can go to another train. I'm going to click around a few trains to show you sort of what is, you know, the, the story of each train is very different because people are getting in a different station and getting off a different station. So each, each train is very different. So this is a much lighter loaded train, for example, right? So, so this is at the, at the specific, at the, at the train uh, level. Now what I'm going to show you is, is the same kind of information on every single station. So I'm clicking on a station. And that tells me pretty much what is happening in terms of waiting time, as well as uh, the, the number of people who are actually waiting in that station. I'm going to click on a few more stations. And that's a junction station, because you actually have like, multiple routes coming into that, into that same station. Now, with that. You know, with that information, what you can do next is actually go much deeper. Because right now, I've given you information about what is happening at that station. Now, it's much more interesting to sort of look at the same kind of metrics at every single platform and every single station. So I'm going to click on one station, on one route. And here, what you're sh seeing is, is basically what is the, uh, the number of people who are missing trains from that station and that specific route between 8 and 8.15 in the morning. So you can see that. Uh, 1,600 people missed uh, zero trains. 1,400 people missed one train. So it's a complete sort of distribution of, of uh, you know, what is happening in that station. Now, how does that compare with uh, the the other days? Is this actually a chronic problem? Is this a, a specific problem to that specific day? So with historical information, we can start computing what is the the same performance of that station at that that uh, in in that in that route at the same time. So essentially, this gives you a, a a simple way in which you can look at what is happening just with existing data. So essentially, what we've been collecting is from the from the cities, the uh, the the transit data, the smart car data, and combined with other you know open data you actually can reconstruct pretty much what is happening uh, in, the, in the entire system. So conceptually, what is happening is that it's really a, you know, there's a jigsaw puzzle and, uh, of like different sort of uh, commuter patterns and with, with interesting math and sort of a massive amount of com computation in the cloud, you can just sort of reconstruct what is happening, a complete sort of MRI of the city. So our, our vision is basically to, I'm switching back my, my slides. It's almost done. I'm trying to find the mouse. So, uh, uh, so essentially, we've done this with, uh, with, by just sort of saying that let's actually use existing data and combining it with other open data to actually figure out what is happening 
for different kinds of modes. So we have this for trains, buses, and other modes as well. So, uh, so essentially, we want to build a complete digital overlay of cities on exactly what is happening in every single bus, every single train, and every single road across space and time. And that's what we do. We have an engines. Thanks. <laughs>